because it's been a roller coaster year for Tesla, from slashing prices in the US starting in January all the way to the release of its much anticipated and controversial Cybertruck just last month. But what were the most consequential things to happen to Elon Musk's company this year, and what's still to come? Gary Black, the Future Fund managing partner, joins me now alongside Yahoo Finance's Praz Subramanian. Welcome to both of you. So, Gary, I want to start with what you consider the most consequential story of the year for Tesla. Well, Cybertruck is huge. Um, you know, last time we saw this level of innovation is when they launched Model Y, and it created a halo effect for the whole Tesla franchise. You saw volumes explode in 2021 after Model Y came out. It went up 87% after being up, I think it was like 37 in the prior year. Um, you're going to see a similar halo effect this time. People are lining up to go into the stores. They can't get a Cybertruck unless you ordered it four years ago. But what's happening is people go in, they learn about Tesla, and they buy a Model 3 or they Model Y. Um, and I think that's probably the most important factor. You mentioned price cuts. You know, Tesla took prices down earlier in the year. Um, they didn't really get much out of it. It stopped, I'd say it stopped the bleeding. Uh, I don't really think it was that smart of a move to do it. But on the other hand, um, you know, their volumes for the year are going to come in at about 1.8, which is about 40% above where they were a year ago. And I think one, one of the things investors like me are looking for is have the price cuts stopped. Will you see gross margins bottom uh, either in third quarter or fourth quarter? And I think they have. So that's the second big story. The third big story is going to happen in a couple of weeks. You're going to see the $7,500 EV credit, which up to this point, you get to take it as a tax credit. It's going to go off invoice. And so immediately the prices of all Model Ys are going to effectively go down by 7,500. The Model 3 performance will go down by the same amount. The Model uh, X long range will go down by the same amount. And that's going to be a catalyst for the entire uh, EV industry. So those are three big things that are happening. Hey, Gary Prost here. So talking about those, those price cuts, there was a lot of, you know, hanging about margin dip and when are we going to see that trough for margins based on the fact that, you know, they're cutting prices to move volume. It sounds like you're saying that it wasn't that much, it wasn't a big player in terms of volume, but are you concerned about that margin story at all? Well, it's hit, right? So look, Tesla's up 104% year to date, but fourth quarter of last year, you could see this coming because they started cutting prices in China. People started expecting the price cuts in the fourth quarter. So last year, if you look at fourth quarter of 2022, Tesla was down about 60% and NASDAQ was flat. So the market anticipated the price cuts seeing that they were happening already in China. So margins have dropped, as you say, Prost, from 26% to about 16, I think they've bottomed. And as an investor, you're looking for, you know, what's going to happen going forward. And I think you're going to start seeing margins creep back up. The Cybertruck is priced way above the, the rest of the Tesla franchise. So you're not going to see that many Cybertrucks delivered in 2023. We're expecting, you know, some, maybe 100,000 in 2024. Once you get to 2025, that's when you're going to start seeing, you know, the margin um, increase because of Cybertruck. So I'm not that concerned about the margin because that's already happened, right? But going forward, I need to see that it's stabilized and I need to see it start inching up as we get into 2025. So Gary, one story that may not have moved the needle, but sort of was sort of, I think, uh, a, a, a harbinger of things to come was Tesla's charging deal with Ford that sort of upended that landscape and brought a bunch of traditional OEMs into the Tesla fold. I know that's not going to move the needle much from a financial point of view, but do you think it was, that was a big story for them, a big kind of deal for them as we look forward to the EV transition? Yeah, I, I don't think that's such a big deal. Um, because again, you're, you're, you're using the charging network, which is external to the car, right? I think a bigger story, which a lot of bulls are, are hanging on, I'm not I'm not in this camp, that uh, FSD, that you're going to see a lot of legacy players decide to start paying Tesla for their FSD. That's that's the brains of the car. And so I don't see that happening. I think for, you know, an external, you know, you charge it using a, a Tesla charger. I think that's smart business for GM or Ford or Volkswagen because the biggest, the number one reason people don't buy an EV is because of this so-called range anxiety. Probably the number one thing is cost. They think that the cost is high, even though after the credit, it's really not that. But number two is that they're afraid they're going to run out of charge. And if and if GM or Ford can say, look, you could stop at one of these Tesla superchargers, get your charge filled up in half an hour, and there's 20,000 of these in the United States that relieves that range anxiety. So I think it's good for the other OEMs. I think it's good for Tesla too, because once you're inside it, 
the the the, the supercharger. The the long term bet is the next EV they're going to buy is going to be a Tesla. I mean, they're gorgeous. They have the longest range. Uh, they're the best value for the money. Um, and I think once people drive a Tesla versus say, you know, a Ford Mach E or you know some GM EV, I think y you're sold. You don't go back to the other brands. Tesla has very high brand retention. So the goal is to get people interested in Tesla, let them come to the superchargers, they're gonna see the other Teslas, and chances are that'll be the next Tesla that they buy. And Gary, we certainly saw as people were interested in the Cybertruck, whether all of those, obviously those deposits translate into actual purchases, we still have to see, but it did draw them in. Perhaps I know that they were able to pay a, a bigger deposit to get to test drive it if they sort of looked at some of the other models as well. As we talk about the halo effect, though, we have to talk about the Musk effect. How much does people's actual visceral reaction to Musk himself affect whether or not people are going to be buying Teslas in 2024 versus perhaps seeking other options? Yeah, I mean, people love Musk or they hate him, I and mean, there's no in between. You, you, you're right. There is a brand effect, and and I would argue, you know, the brand has taken a hit during 2023. And look, I'm a bull. We own Tesla. It's our second biggest position, so we're very bullish about Tesla long term. But you have to, even as a bull, acknowledge that the brand has taken a hit this year because of Musk's, you know, whatever we call him antics. You know, when he he when he berates the advertisers and uses, you know a curse word because you cause advertising that's silly okay it's just it, it doesn't it doesn't help the tesla brand and whether we like it or not the tesla brand is you know it's 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 part of it's musk is part of the tesla brand he's one of the few ceos where when people think about the brand they also think about the ceo so i think people either love elon musk or they hate him and I think, you know, as long as he can kind of stand clear of the politics and, and stand clear of the some of the right wing extremist views that, you know, he seemingly has embraced over in Twitter, I think the brand will be fine. We haven't seen any brand impact yet other than they did have to take pricing down this year. And, you know, if you're a bull, you have to acknowledge that margins came down a lot. Prices came down a lot. Margins came down to Tesla more than any other brand this year. So one has to, if you're being honest with yourself, acknowledge there must have been some brand of impact for or or they wouldn't have had to take prices down as much as they did. Hey, Gary, so looking ahead to 2024, what are some of the key things you're watching for Tesla as we see so the next part of the story unfold? And also, I know that you've been talking about how Tesla trading at, I think, 58 times adjusted EPS for 2024. You think that's cheap, right? So I want to get more of that story as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the big catalyst we're looking for is one we talked about Auto gross margins have to bottom. They, they hit 16.3. Uh, this is excluding the reg credits. They hit 16.3 in the third quarter. We think they'll be about the same in the fourth quarter. Then we think they're going to get back into the 17 range uh, in 2024. So that's the first thing that has to happen. Two, you have to see that there is some halo effect that's come from Cybertruck. We think we're going to see that starting in the first, second quarter. And related to that is that $7,500 EV credit, which is going in, into place off invoice in two weeks. Third, people are going to start talking about this other end of it, which is the $25,000 vehicle. To me, that's where Tesla can get, you know, up to say 5 million units because you're going into the mass market. Now, when Tesla is viewed as a luxury brand, when you bring the brand down to the masses by bringing out a $25,000 vehicle and you put the Tesla brand on, everybody's going to want that. And they're going to get a $7,500 credit for that if they buy it inside the United States. So if it's, um, you know, a, a U.S. delivery, you'll get that $7,500 credit as well. So I think those are the big events that we're looking for. And then the fifth one, I would argue, would be declining interest rates. We saw the Fed you know, pivot, for, for lack of a better word. They're going to start taking rates down in the spring. We could see that from the dot plot. That helps long-duration growth stocks the most, long-duration meaning high PE, where the, the earnings and the cash flows are a couple of years out, because you're basically discounting those earnings at a, at a, at a, at a lower rate. So that helps Tesla. So back to your second question about PEs, Tesla's trading at about 58 times my next year's estimate. You know, people say that's expensive, but you, you can't, if you, if you study finance, you, you, you know that you have to look at what is that relative to the growth rate? Because the growth rate, if it's flat, like on a GM or a Ford, 58 times would be absurd. But if you're growing your, your, your volumes and your earnings at 25 to, on, on volumes and 35 at earnings, you know, that's not really that expensive. So you look at something like Apple, Apple trades at about uh, 30 times earnings today. 
but it's only growing at about 10% a year. So on a price earnings relative to growth basis, that's about three times. Tesla is trading at 58 times earnings, but it's growing its earnings at about 35% a year. So it's trading at a peg of about 1.8. You know, So that's pretty cheap relative to other, we'll call it mega caps. Relative to NASDAQ, NASDAQ's trading at an overall peg of about two. So I would argue that as long as Tesla can sustain its growth rate at 35%, mm. it still looks pretty cheap. The, 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 the reason it's growing so fast though, is because EV adoption is soaring. If you look at Norway, you look at the Netherlands, you look at even China, you could see EV right. adoption going through the roof. It's not so much true in the US yet, but if, if EV adoption today, which is about 12, can get to 60 by 2030, which is our projection, that's about 24% uh, tailwind growth just for the whole category. And in our view is that Tesla could gain share within the EV category because of its innovation. So because of Cybertruck, because of right. um, the, the $25,000 vehicle, and, and maybe you'll get some positive because of FSD, though we're not counting on that. That's the full self-driving.